Hello again. Time now for our music special. This week, Roland Gift of the Fine Young Cannibals talks about his acting experiences and the limited opportunities for black actors today. And the rest of the band talk about girls. I think it's difficult for young British blacks anyway, and it's even, and it is very difficult for, for young British black actors because most people who write and organise TV programmes and organise films are white. <laughs> I think we do have a sound. I think we had a. I think we captured a sound with the first album. I'd, but it's just because of the way we play. It's the way we play our instruments. The way we. The, the way we treat songs, really, that they are going to sound like Fine Young Cannibal songs. I mean, the, the songs are, are quite different from the first album, and even on the album itself, you get quite quite a difference in sounds. But you can always tell it's ours. <laughs> Idea behind it, it was though, but it was a yeah. good thing. <laughs> well, we didn't like Margaret Thatcher, and we, we still don't, so we wrote a song about it. I mean, it would have been so sort of, we still don't like her anymore, but um, you know, to write Blue too wouldn't have been so good. We never really sort of set out to be a political band, it, that was 
I mean, we, we didn't sort of set out to write Blue as an anti-Thatcher song. I mean, it, it is, but we didn't sort of say, oh, right, we've got to include an anti-Thatcher song on the album. That's just what came out. And, um, and it, was, it was sort of, it was picked on, and we were sort of picked on as, as the new sort of left-wing band. But we, we never really tried to, tried to do that. We, we haven't changed from the last album, really. My hometown is falling down. And the people left, don't see him again. I'm mad about that. but there's nothing that we really definitely want to do yet. I think we want to do something a little bit different as well for the next film score. Maybe a science fiction movie. After Tin Man, we got all like, these 60s films to do the score, and we don't want to do you know, something exactly the same as Tin Man. Yeah, I think it very definitely does, because if we be it would get very boring if we did an album and then went on tour and then did another al album and went on tour. That would be quite boring. So it's nice to be able to go off and do, do other things because they feed what we do in the end. And it, it makes what we do more interesting, more interesting to us as well, as well as anybody else who's listening. What are you doing now? Haven't you anywhere to go to? I'm with you, aren't I? What's the matter, Victoria? For a long time, right? I've been for non-violence. Never gone for burning things down. I can see the attraction, but not the achievement. After all, you guys ended colonialism non-violently. You'd sit down all over the place, right? Well, we have a kind of domestic colonialism to deal with here, because they don't allow us to run our own communities. But if full-scale civil war breaks out, we can only lose. And what's going to happen to all that beauty? If I lived here, I would be on your side. 
It's the necessity of the age. It gives me hope. But how should we fight? That's what I want to know. I play a guy called Johnny Edgecombe, who was one of Christine Keeler's lovers, for she had many. And um, my character gets very angry with her one day because she won't help him, so he tries to shoot her. And he happens to shoot her in the house where she's having it off with the government official and the Russian spy. And that causes the police to come down and then the whole thing gets in the papers. And then the scandal is made public. Christine! Christine! It's him. Ooh. Johnny. Christine! Go and look. You go and look. Pretend I've gone to the hairdressers or something. Go on. What do you want? Where is she? She's not here. She's gone. I'm just going to talk to her. No big thing. Just a couple of minutes. She's gone to the hairdressers. She's not here. Christine! He doesn't believe me. Christine! Christine! Johnny. Open the door for me now. You must go away. You'll get into trouble. Open his door. I got a taxi waiting. Johnny, please. Christine, lucky garden. Him after me. I'm going to kill me. I got nowhere to go. I can't. Christine, please. I can't. Please. Here. Take this and go away. Bitch. Come on, you bitch. You see this? Christine. Got a gun. Oh, Shame, please. Christine, come and get in this taxi, you bitch. Come now. Johnny, listen to me. Put the gun away. Get me the police. No There's a man with a gun. <laughs> oh, Dr. Ward, I just thought you should know. There's a black man shooting at your front door. It's very kind of you to call. I don't think we'll actually do anything ourselves again because you have to do all the sort of promotional stuff with it. It's better really to produce other people because you get the fun of making the record, but you don't have to do the sort of interviews and all that business. Not that we don't love doing interviews. Don't get me wrong. <laughs>
I think there's bits of that even on the LP, although we try to still work more in a song format rather than in eight minute jams. And I like a bit of melody still. So there's, yeah, there's elements of it, right? <laughs> Falling in love with someone else. 
but probably it's songs and also the packaging is very is very good but i think the songs are probably the best things about it we just thought we had to make something that sounded as good as we could make it that's why it took a few months most of the songs are about david and andy and their their relationships not about mine at all they're the ones with the problems <laughs> No, we're going to stick together. I mean, there was never any idea that we were going to split up. I mean, some people thought when they hadn't heard anything of us for a long time that maybe we might have split up. And then when, you know, I did a movie and two men, drum machine and a trumpet, you know, people were saying to me, oh, you've split up, haven't you? But um, there was never any idea that we would. So we're just going to go on and do the next album. And then we might even tour after that. It's not like just because Roland might be doing some acting and we're producing, it's not like we lose contact with each other. I mean, we still know his phone number, so it's quite easy to, to stay together. The next music special is at 4 a.m. on Tuesday featuring Phil Collins, and next Thursday at 4 you can see Diana Ross working overtime. Coming up next on ITV, America's Top Ten with Casey Kasem.